Good morning, good morning guys. We're back at it again with another video for the DIY concrete deck and metal pergola. So what you would have seen at the start of this video is uh, me struggling with these huge 20 foot long pieces of, uh, of steel here to, uh, to cut them down to the correct length that we need for the pergola posts. So they were 20 feet long. I cut them down uh, to 12 feet long. So we're gonna have about two feet in the ground plus another three or four inches that's gonna be on top of that for the slab. So there's gonna be approximately about nine and a half feet sticking out of the ground. And what's nice with that is that if I, if I wanna trim them a little bit just to, to just to make sure that they're all at the same height, I've got some play with that there. Some of you may remember Ray from the Rambler shower wall um, that I helped out with in Tucson. And uh, he works with a guy named, his name's Jake, and he does a lot of the metal work with Ray when they're doing really kind of unique projects. And so he's gonna come out and help me with the welding um, on this pergola just because I've never done welding and I really have no idea what I'm doing. So he's gonna help me out, but he also suggested that since we're gonna be burying these posts down into the concrete, is to dip the ends of them in just like a, uh, a basic like exterior primer here. So that's what we did yesterday. Holy moly. So that's what Hannah and I struggled with at the end of yesterday. And uh, I'm gonna paint them all the way up to about 24 inches, but I just wanted to dip them in the paint so that not only the bottom of them got nicely coated with the, uh, with the primer, but also the inside of the tube as well. So I've got a little roller brush and we'll just coat them up to about 24 inches on the outside. They only go to about 12 or 13 inches on the inside. That's fine though, because most of the concrete is gonna be on the, on the exterior of the post anyways. So the paint's purpose is to minimize the amount of rust or oxidization that's gonna be happening on the steel, uh, just so that they're gonna last a lot longer in the concrete there. So what we're gonna get done today is quickly coat these posts up to 24 inches. We're gonna move the batter board lines, so the string lines, we're gonna move them in about four and a half inches on each of the uh, of the dimensions there. That's gonna mark the corners for these pergola posts here. And then we're gonna get them mounted straight up and down. And by the end of the day, we're gonna, we're gonna put some concrete in them so that they're nice and solid. So I'm just using a small roller brush just to paint the ends of the pergola posts here up to 24 inches. Just because it was so hot out, I was able to put on two coats very quickly on these. Based on the SketchUp model that I created for the concrete deck and metal pergola, I knew that I just needed to bring in the string lines four and a half inches on each side uh, just so that I knew exactly where the corners were going to be for the pergola posts. This made it way easier when I was actually trying to plumb up the posts to know exactly where they needed to be with the string lines. And then I just double checked across the diagonal by measuring both diagonals and just ensuring that they were the same so that I know we have a uh, perfect rectangle.
So I just used some concrete stakes and some scrap 2x4s to set up the, uh, the diagonal braces here for the, uh, for the posts. Once I got it plumbed up, um, I did originally try to use self-topping screws to secure the pergola posts in place. Um, I found that doing this by myself was quite difficult. So you'll see in the next few video clips that I ended up just using my, my quick grips to hold it in place while I started to put the concrete in. Since I was only mixing two bags of concrete per pergola post, um, it was just easy enough just to do it in the wheelbarrow. Um, I do have a cement mixer now, and just getting that going and then having to clean the entire thing, um, sometimes it can just be easier just to mix it right in the wheelbarrow. There's not really a huge trick to doing concrete in the wheelbarrow, just start wetting it, mix it around, keep wetting it again, um, and keep doing that until it gets to your desired consistency. So at this point, I've already done two of the pergola posts. I'm doing the third and the fourth one on this day. I kind of staggered it so that I would do two in the morning, um, take, off the, uh, take off the braces, and then do another two in the afternoon. Using the quick grips made it really easy to make any small adjustments to the, to the metal post just so that I could make sure that it was perfectly plumb. And taking time to get this done right just makes the overall structure look a lot better. So when you look at it, everything looks like it was done as it should be. When you're doing posts like this, they just need to be braced. Um, well, it kind of depends on the on the concrete mixture. If it's really soupy, you'd probably just want them to set for at least 24 hours before you take off the braces. If, it, if it's a good, decent, dry mixture, then you can let it go for you know five or six hours, take off the braces, and that post is going to be uh, it's going to be rock solid where it is, and then it, it's it's going to take some more time, um, up to about a month for it to fully cure. Boom! <laughs> I gotta work on my martial arts. I gotta start following Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. Typhoon Master. Boom! All right, guys, we got all the posts in place. Uh, just looking at them visually, like down the line, they're actually all pretty well in line. I think there's the one back one over there that was just like, just a little bit off, but it's all good. So yeah, like I mentioned in the video, I was using these quick grips here. To, uh, to hold the post in place with the, uh, with the diagonal boards there. You can see here I was pre-drilling and trying to use the self-tappers. This steel, I think it's 3 16 inch thick. And these self-tapping screws, um, they do work really well, but not necessarily very well with steel that is very thick. They tend to, uh, tends to snap off the head, or not the head, but the end here, the part that's actually doing the tapping. These do work well with much thinner metal, and these are two inch ones, and I think just for this application, if I had two and a half inch ones, and I had an extra set of hands, uh, for somebody to be able to hold the, the, uh, the post in place while I screw into it, or at least using the quick grips to get it in place, and then screwing through at that point. And these quick grips are expensive, they're like 25 bucks each. 
So I had two and I went and bought another two just so that I could do two at a time. So that's just to keep in mind, these things aren't cheap, but man oh man, are they ever freaking handy, especially when you're trying to do jobs by yourself. When you have an extra set of hands, things are typically a lot easier. And uh, when you're working by yourself, Sometimes you gotta be creative with how you do things. All right guys, in the next video, we're gonna be building the formwork, going around the pergola posts, pouring the concrete, smoothing it out real nice, and then we'll have, we'll have pretty well the base of the structure. And my buddy Jake, I believe, is coming out next Monday to come out and do the welding work. And then that's pretty much it for the base of this. Then we're gonna do some concrete sanding and possibly some etches as well and probably do a, do a rust job on the steel. Give it, give it a nice coat of sweet, sweet rust. Awesome guys, I'll be speaking at the Homesetting Life Conference in Hannibal, Missouri with Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, August 12th to 13th this year. And uh, I'll leave a link down in the description box and in the comments if you wanna check it out. And come on down Hannibal. Awesome guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon, peace.